LeBron, uh, the fourth quarter, the, the defense was, was obviously good and held them to 15 points. But on offense, you spent a lot of time, seemed like, battling inside and getting position and getting some big rebounds. So was, was there something that you just noticed about that space on the floor while you were uh, kind of using your force down there? No, uh, just reading the game properly. Um, I understood that, um, you know, my, my game uh, was needed more in the interior tonight than the exterior and not on the perimeter. So I try to work my wheel down there, get some extra rebounds, um, you know, get some easy buckets around the rim and um, allowed us to have um, you know, some, some, some pain points get us into the, um, into the bonus early. That was really good for us, even though uh, we didn't convert a few of them, but, you know, we were attacking, um, you know, especially in that fourth quarter. The AD that you saw, you know, kind of block Halliburton there after the ISO, it's just a play that we've seen from him many times. Uh, there aren't that many players in the league that can do it. Obviously, you've switched on to guards and done the same thing. What's the key in that situation, and, and <coughs> does that tell you anything about AD, like, starting to find his rhythm again? Yeah, um, I mean, AD can, can guard um, you know, everyone in this league, and we feel real confident when we start switching late game or if we decide to go to a switch package that he can stay in front of guards. Um, and then it's our job on the weak side to keep the, the big off the glass and not lose track of shooters that may be relocating on drive. So, uh, you know, AD did a great job of being able to uh, contain Halliburton and get the block and save it. LeBron, what did you think of Pat on the ball, um, especially in the second half? And, and did you, when, when a player plays with that kind of intensity, how does it sort of bleed everywhere else? Um, I thought he was excellent tonight on both sides of the floor. I mean, he had a plus 16, very positive throughout the whole night. And, you know, Halliburton is a, you know, an all-star for a reason. He's been playing the game this year at an extremely high level. And, you know, Pat just trying to make it tough on him. Um, you know, was able to get that steal that we had to challenge. Um, but that was a good, a good play, a good swipe, and had some other good, um, um, you know, defensive, um, um, you know, key stops for us down the stretch. Especially defensively in close games like this, which you've been in a lot of, how does 80s presence on the back line just change the confidence you guys have to, to finish out games? I mean, he's a defensive player of the year, player every night, so and the confidence is extremely high when we know we have 80 on the back line. LeBron, what does the, the first All-Star, like making the All-Star team for the first time, what does that mean to a player? And what does it say about a player like Tyrese Halliburton that he made it for the first time this year? Well, I don't know the second part of it, because um, that's a Tyrese question. You have to ask him. But the first part, um, it's, a, it's a great feeling just to you know, be a part of a select few. Um, you know, you get in either through fans or, you know, um, through your peers or the coaches that respect the way you play the game. And uh, you've been playing at a high level. Um, you know, through two, through two thirds of the season, so um, it's definitely a respect thing. And um, you know, he's been playing good basketball this year, and he's been playing at a high level. Yeah, I do. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't really happen on Saturday, but yeah. I recognize in a way this would be impossible for what you're about to do, but you can take yourself out of the Um, I think it's one of the greatest records um, in sports in general. I think it's up there with the home run record, um, you know, in baseball. Um, it's just one of those records that um, you just don't ever see or think that will be broken, you know. And then you you end up seeing guys, you know. You, you had Hank Aaron that had it for so long, and he's, you see the guys, the likes of like Sammy and Mark McGuire and those guys, you know, start climbing that. It was like, oh, man, this thing can really, this thing can really happen, you know. And you start really watching it and paying attention to it, and you seeing Sammy and Mark McGuire go to the, uh, go up the bat, and you like, they got a chance to knock it out every single time, you know. And it was, a, it was a fun, for me as a as a sports person. It was fun watching those guys just go up the bat and, and chase it. So, um, I mean, I grew up being a historian of all sports and understanding, <clears throat> you know, that I didn't, I don't have the number like planted in my head, the, the actual real number. I know it's 38 something, but I know it's been Kareem in my whole life. Um, so, um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. But you averaged 30 uh, throughout your first five years. 
I don't know. Um, I still try to just remain efficient, I guess. I, was, I always want to be efficient. I always, um, you know, take the game uh, very, very seriously. You want to pull up a chair, champ? You want to pull up a chair? Is it? Oh. I don't think they're gonna give me one more. Um, just being efficient, being efficient. I don't know. I don't. I don't have a, a reason why. Um, you know, I am averaging what I'm averaging right now, but I always just try to maintain the efficiency with my game. I don't want to be out there just casting shots, just to be casting shots. I want to always play the game the right way and be efficient with my game. So I've been able to do that. You know, pretty much throughout my whole career.